is up, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, day traders, closet swing traders. Hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic, absolutely incredible this morning. Let you guys pile in. We get to switch some screens. We got Maloney. Good morning, Maloney. We got Flo. Good morning, Tony. Bill is in the house. Good morning, Brian Davis. We got Brian Thompson. Daniel's in the house. Good morning, Jenny. My boy, Greg Gilbert's in the house. GW. Good to be back with you. Jake, good morning. We got Jeremy, Joe, Kyle, Matt. Peggy's in the house. Good morning, Peggy. We got Rick. Rock. Rock is just focusing on DraftKings right now. Trying to see what's going on. Tony, good morning. Yasser, Sylvan. We got Raj. Quantran's in the house. <laughs> my, my favorite name of all time. Quantran, for sure. Man. All right. Greg Gilbert says, good morning, folks. Probably as a bystander, no give back money on the last day. A little strategy for the last day, and that does sound like a good one. You work hard for your money all month. Don't let the last day get to you. Don't let the last day. We'll see if we can find something to, to trade. Paul is in YouTube land. Asher, I think I said that correct. Good morning in YouTube land as well. All right. We got Richard at YouTube. Ooh, the YouTube fam showing up today. YouTube fam is showing up today too. I like it. I love it. And I want some more of it. All right. Let's check out where the uh, the spy is at this morning. Let me slap my chart over just so I can see it a little bit. So uh, that nice whole psychological number. Um, yesterday was key. <laughs> yesterday was a key spot for a bounce. I don't know. Uh, I don't know about anything as far as uh, if this market is going to really hold this spot and this is a new leg up at the zone. If it is, I could definitely make that case that this was a strong, strong spot to do. So I did sell my puts or uh, close, close my puts out yesterday only solely because we were at that uh, 50% retracement. So this, uh, let me go out a little bit further on the daily chart. This is a fib that I've, I drew, I think, on Monday. I actually drew it. I drew this one yesterday, to be fair. But uh, I drew the same fib in Thinkorswim, which is the chart I look at more. Uh, I drew this one, I think, last night during the mentor group. But we were watching this one live. Um, so I was on the mic when we started to hit that 50% retrace. This fib, um, and this one's not measuring exactly the if any of the other one is, but this one is getting us uh, from where this actual pivot, where we went on, to be fair, a really, really strong bullish pivot, right? Um, this is just a retrace. We have the 50% that we got a bounce off of yesterday. All right, Woodshed's in the house. What's up, Woodshed? Chris, good morning. Uh, we have the one level lower, which is like our next level that we kind of have to hold. So I'm looking at those two spots, and we're trying to determine, is this the low of the year? Do we do we put maybe another leg up? How high do we go if we do? I don't even want to think about the latter of that question until I know if we're bouncing, right? And we don't we don't know yet. But uh, what we could do from here is we could take this little bit of a downtrend. So we know in there, local missions is in uh, YouTube land. Good morning. Uh, we could take this little bit of a downtrend. Right. So this is at least worst case I'll pull back because there's there could be uh, when we get to wave counts. This is where it gets a little tricky because there's waves inside of waves. Right. Um, looking at this overall just pattern, I can make a case that maybe it's either this is one entire move. Then this is uh, that pullback is two. This is three. If that's three, this is a deep pullback. That would be four. And then we could make potentially one new higher high if this is how this wants to play out before we get to to this line though we could also make a case that this was one two three four five right and then this is our next wave down this is one two we're in some type of three i'm pretty convinced of that right and even though even though this is five legs five moves within this line that would still still equate to that being in a longer term trend 
Um, I think we could possibly do this. I just don't know if we hold this 50 or we hit the 618. I think just based on, and this is uh, my theory, my theory only. Um, I think this is a one, two. I think this is our three in this wave down, which in a bigger picture, this to me is still potentially wave four, right? So I think this is in a bigger picture. We're still at wave four. We're still at the zone where this is a pullback. Obviously, until we start breaking out of that downtrend, we're not confirmed for, for the other move. But if this is three and we do bounce here, we're probably looking at maybe a move into 405-ish, which would give us about $5 to the upside today. And then we get that roll, which would either be probably double bottom right back to that 50, or that's where we come in. We get that move into that 618, which is 388. 89 that would uh cause a little bit of disparity in the markets itself because people are like what is this thing is this, this thing is never going to bounce we are going to hit new lows and we hit that 618 which is a fantastic spot that would also complete a five wave count at least on this entire wave and then we get the potential at that point to set up that being said i think today could just just as long as we're holding these spots if we're looking at where the vpox are too uh, so we had yesterday's VPOC. Uh, clear all drawings, good. So we had um, yesterday's VPOC sitting somewhere down here, right? Somewhere at the 398. We are gapping above that for right now. So I'm going to make a case, again, just based on that, uh, maybe even a small pullback to that zone again. I don't know if that exactly how that's going to happen. Uh, let's go to some extended hours because maybe we already did that. Um, I'll go with Justin. So here is, is this extended? No, I don't with, oh yeah, because I'm on a daily chart. Let's go to a, uh, let's go to hourly. That's fine. Can't have extended, can't extend the day. It's only 24 hours. Um, I don't know, I had it up here two seconds ago. Oh, never mind. Extended. Got to hit the right buttons, I guess. That would help. All right. So we are, with extended hours, we have a little bit of a gap up. We're pushing into that gap now. So we have already got there once. We failed. This is a retest. If we're sitting there above this pre-market, we should have decent, decent momentum up until where? Next spot would be 403. We said somewhere maybe in the 405 zone we could get to. But next, next real volume, next point of interest would probably be somewhere... Uh, with extended hours on 403, right? So we have some room to the upside. If we take off the uh, extended hours, we have it on the hourly chart. The next spot of interest, again, still that 402, 403 zone. So somewhere somewhere right there, I think the next VPOC is still at that 403. The next one higher is maybe it's that 406, somewhere in that zone, um, which again is light volume all that. So I, I think we still, I, I think we're in for a little bit of a chop as far as when I say chop, I, I don't know if it's going to be a narrow range trading day. We've sold a lot within the last three days, getting some kind of another rest day, kind of like what we saw two days ago inside candle with a little bit of a bullish edge. I think that's the way I want to lean today. Stephen King's in the house. Good morning. Uh, which just says five waves down to complete a big B down. Yep. Potentially. Uh, I make the case it is a A up, B down, C, and then back down. Well, that's the other thing, right? So we don't we don't know. Um, even if this, even if my scenario is right, right? And I know what you're saying. This is A, B, C. We still have an overall bigger picture of a head and shoulders on the spy too. So I'd make a case that this is the left shoulder. That's the head. This is the right, which would take us to this is our neckline. And if we get some kind of a break, this could also happen too. So the longer term picture, I don't know. We're kind of in a very strange spot. Um, but I think this, this entire move so far is still justified for this move. And if this, if this is a three, right, if this is our three, I don't the, – the longer that we're sitting in this four, the bigger that, that next push-up will be. But um, we, we have a lot of, 
a lot of volume in the way, but we also have some good support in the way. So we're kind of in a little bit of no man's land for right now. Right. I mean, we have, we have some, some volume pox that, that are popping up over here, but it, it's going to get a little choppy. So Greg, Greg Gilbert said, you're going to sit on the sidelines, going to be a viewer. Um, and I get it. Don't, don't push trades, especially uh, the last day of the month, because I mean, it's all about being consistently profitable, right? If there's a trade that you love, you want to take it, take it. Otherwise, I mean, do you have to, is it much better to play those big days that just have no floor to them, no, no support until far away, kind of like yesterday? Or is it more important to you to just be in a trade? Richard Jett, good morning. Am I the only one who can't hear him? Uh, Asher says I can hear him, local mission. So YouTube, you guys are good on volume. Haley says thoughts on BBBY. Uh, it's pretty much going to the casino, but we'll take a look at that. Natasha, good morning. Thomas, good morning. Yep. So in uh in Zoom land, we're good. In YouTube, we're good. Uh, on the one hour, including PM, is it not kind of a bear flag? Uh, including pre market. So extended hours on, and you're on the the one hour. Um, so you're saying is this some kind of type of a bear flag? Yeah, potentially, right? So I, I see what you're looking at. Um, but the bear flag is really the wave. Right. So if we're looking at an hourly chart, and again, too, take the, the pre-markets are important to markets, um, but mainly because of support resistance levels. If we get up into, like if we're gapping up and, and right where we're opening now too, so this, this VPOC is from pre-market. That puts us about 50% uh, to, a, to the next target into the uh, 40243-ish, right? If we could get up to that, that next VPOC, and again, this is with pre-market on, stuff like that, obviously without, we do have a little bit higher. But we're about a 50-50 split from VPOC to VPOC as to where we're sitting right now. I think the edge might still be a little because we started to get some kind of developing VPOC that's pushing up a little bit higher. Uh, this could definitely be, I like this 50% hold level. And again, once we start breaking really that, that big red candle right here with that 50% mark, if we start breaking that next target for me, I think is a clear, I think we get under 390. So somewhere in the three, 388, high 388s, low 389 zone, something like that. Having that, having that level, we do have to still wipe out some, some by the dippers. Um, and I think that that potentially could still set up. So again, I have to lead, I have to at this point say that this support that we tested about three, four, five, six times yesterday has to be our good support. Even if we come back down again, the only problem with retesting that again today means that we've also now gone right back below yesterday's VPOC. And that's going to make this a little bit of a weaker potential uh, double bottom spot, right? So that's that's going to be an important level today, somewhere around that 398.45-ish, 398.50, something in that zone. Take a look at the cues real quick. The cues. All right, let me take the extended hours off just to get an idea of where we're actually at in this market. Uh, so the cues themselves... Again, a little bit of a gap up. The uh, you, you, we're opening right in the middle. So again, next target on the queues three oh six oh seven, and then we have three hundred and forty seven cents. So about three dollars to the higher side, three dollars to the low side. Uh, we are above the ten EMA on the hourly chart, but did we just not see the same exact thing yesterday? We opened above the ten EMA yesterday. We were able to, uh, we had some VPOX in the way. If I'm going to try long, I prefer the queues closer to 300. If I prefer short, somewhere in the 306 range, just for pure purpose of risk reward. But otherwise, right, right in the, uh, right in this, it looks very closely similar to tomorrow or yesterday. 
Uh, let me see. PayPal was the first one requested. So we'll take a look at PayPal. And then we should have time to get into other stocks too if we go through some of the requests. So PayPal does have a nice gap up. Uh, this is a decent one. So we are we are breaking with this gap pretty much one, two, three, four, five, six levels of VPOC. Uh, the only problem is we are going to have a decently strong kind of support at 95.18. So you only have about 20, about 30, 40 cents. You have about 40 cents to a bullish direction on this one. If this thing gaps up and starts opening higher than 95.26, then I absolutely love this thing bullish because next target on that becomes to me would be closer to that 96.66 zone. So you'd have some more room. I don't know how strong this is going to be, but we we are definitely we are definitely trapping some of the bears on this play. To what extent? I mean, if the market watch watch that watch that zone a lot, 95.20. What I would love to see come in on this is so let's extend out that VPOC a little bit. Is this? I would love to see us get up past that, come back, retest, and then we look for either 10 EMA, some kind of candle, something to break out from there, and then we're going to take it up to, to that zone, right? And this, this zone, by the way, this zone is a lot weaker now because this was already retested once. So really, um, even though that would be my initial target, maybe take some partial, something like that, the next VPOC on this one isn't up until past $99, right? Almost close to 100 at that point. This 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 VPOC is the next one, but it's already been retested once. That's going to make it tougher. So by waiting, I think we're able to, I think we're able to uh, make sure that we can get the actual break of that VPOC as opposed to jumping in, getting trapped, pulls back. Um, but I do agree, it's going to have definitely some more bullish edge, uh, in my opinion. But this is going to be our key level that we'd have to break, get that retest, and then look for that for that move higher. Uh, I think somebody wanted to check out BBBY. BBBY. Uh, technically a retest gap, right? So this, this one's going to be a little bit on the trickier side. We are gapping into a little bit of support. We are breaking down a decent amount of uh, VPOC levels. So it's going to have a little bit of a bearish edge, technically a retest gap. So you might want to wait for this thing to retest how far we retest that I'm not sure. Um, I'd, I'd be looking for maybe an entry. If you're playing this one somewhere at maybe close to the just under $11 zone. So see if we get that, that should hold in some of those levels. If it doesn't, then the next spot is let's try to get a retest closer to this. But this is a retest opening at a little bit of support down here. This is also the uh, the uh oh zone. So if you're bullish on this trade, if you're bullish on Bed Bath Beyond, uh, that's the zone that has to hold. Right? We need we're going to need this VPOC to hold. Otherwise, if 874 breaks, so I would almost even say, okay, uh, somewhere at the open, especially if you get a red candle, you're looking to take a break uh, bullish above that red candle, and that red candle could be a minute, could be a three minute chart. But see if you get a break above that red candle. Somewhere under here would be your stop, 842, and then try to just let that thing ride. But you have you do have a, a big wide range in this thing um, because that's that's your, like I said, the uh oh zone. If you're bullish, that has to hold, right? So if that starts breaking at any point, just be out of the trade, bullish, uh, take the loss. Um, but maybe you can play that to the bullish side. If you want to play it bearish, you got to wait. You got to wait for this thing to go higher or confirm breakdown. Uh, we have not looked at snap a snap moving and i see meta and some good gaps out there today oh uh, yeah uh, chewy i looked at last night yeah i didn't look at a pre-market yet all right so we got snapchat the snaparoo uh this is a decent gap so i like this one actually so far better than all just because at least at this moment we are above ooh, yep slightly above that VPOC, this is trapping an enormous amount of bears. This one looks phenomenal to me. Next target would be $11.69. If this thing actually does open up here, the problem is where is this thing gonna open? So be very careful of where this thing opens. Right now it's just jumping back and forth above and below this VPOC. 
Anything above eleven dollars and six cents uh, at open. If you want to take it bullish, you'd have my blessing on that one. But that takes you to the next target of eleven dollars and sixty eight cents. So uh, and probably maybe some kind of partial at like eleven forty somewhere in that zone. But you should be able to make a decent trade. That one looks good. We are definitely trapping a decent amount of bears on that one. Let's take a look at Chewy. And we got uh, NOD UFC. Is that UFC? Oh. We got Chewy. Yep, major, major gap down. Um, this one's going to actually be probably a little bit trickier to play. Targets to the downside, the immediate target about 32.95. Even though this chart looks like a complete de disaster, your risk to reward is actually to the higher side. Trying to play this attempted bullish is going to be uh, the better risk to reward, even though it looks like a complete disaster. Um, this is where you have some kind of VPOC, some kind of support down here. This chart, there's a lot of people selling or shorting, right? Uh, if, if any of these people are going short, and again, you're trapping a decent amount of people above, below a lot of things. Um, I don't, I don't even know how far this thing runs. Maybe not all the way to a, a full-on retest. But yesterday was a down day. I expect some kind of people to be profitable at open on this one. Um, and to the higher side, I'd be very worried about 95, 28 because we are breaking a lot of key levels, right? A lot of pivots where these bulls tried to push this thing up. Every single one of them was trapped. The overall bigger picture is going to be to the downside, but at open, I'd have to be risk to reward to the upside. See if we get to that 35, 28, 35, 38 mm -hmm. zone, whatever, somewhere in that spot. See how it wants to interact there. And then maybe that's the spot to, to attempt to short it for better risk reward to the downside. So overall, uh, that's a that's a bad looking, bad looking gap on this one. Just depends to me. Um, because you're down so massive, you're probably going to get some of those shorts being profitable at open. And that might be a little bit on the trickier side to trade. We got PayPal. Uh, yeah, so PayPal, we did take a look at, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, PayPal, we're just waiting to see where this thing actually opens. So it's, it's a, it is a gap and go. Um, it looks good. My, my only problem where I don't want to jump in immediately is this 95-17 zone. So we have some type of VPOC here, anything above that one. So again, wait for that. For me, my plan is wait for that break higher than that. See if that comes back down to retest at 95.17. That's my cue to get in. Uh, we do have one spot somewhere 96 in the 96.75-ish, 96.70, whatever it is. Uh, somewhere somewhere there, maybe for a partial. But again, I think that, that target's already been weakened. The next spot for me on this one would be about 99.66. But, you know, looks, looks interesting. Uh, Tesla, we got Thomas in YouTube land. He's saying Tesla, which is good because we got the 10 EMA. We gotta we gotta look for the stocks we're we're trading too. We're taking some official 10 EMAs. Uh, Tesla to me, we're we're back. We're at and or slightly above that 10 EMA on the hourly. So right now a 10 EMA can't really play this one. Uh, just because uh, if we're going with the official rules on 10 EMA, if you guys are not familiar with the 10 EMA strategy or the official rules, you guys can check them out for free. Just go to reallifetrading.com. Look at your uh, your own personal free dashboard and you'll see an icon that says 10 EMA. We do have the rules listed there. Um, that being said, so we are gapping up a little bit. We've had some bullishness into that gap, but uh, and we are also above the 10 EMA. However, it's an inside day which means you're probably at least to this point going to be a little range bound. Um, again, just where the market kind of bounced, I want to have a little bit of a potential bullish edge to everything, but uh, let's see if we can get a bounce, maybe a retest into this 275.83, create some kind of double bottom. It'd be also beneficial for us to, to look for some kind of break of this downtrend that was there too. But uh, yeah, see if we get a retest. Otherwise, we are a little bit range bound in Tesla. And especially at open, we're probably going to get some some momentum on some of the other uh, gap stocks that we we've been looking at. We got bros. Hey, bro, you want a coffee? You want coffee, bro? 
but get Starbucks. I'm broke. Uh, we got this one might be a little bit of a tight range as well. Um, 37.18, 37.53. If we start breaking that 37.53, um, I mean, really, we want to try to break this 37.95 because this could be a spot where the bears try. This does look a little bear flag ish. Um, and we're kind of just sitting sitting in yesterday's range a little bit still to the lower side. So, this, and we're below the 10 May. So, again, it still kind of looks a little bit weak. Um, if this thing starts breaking the VPOC, this is what I would be looking for. This is this is what's going to give us the best range. If we do break down, if we start breaking yesterday's VPOC and holding, uh, the next target on this thing could get all the way back to really this untested VPOC all the way at 34.65. That would be my risk reward that I would like to play on that one. Google. How often? How often can we watch this live trading sessions? Uh, every single day, we are live on YouTube from 9 a.m. Eastern to 9.30 Eastern. Um, and then we are with the uh, Real Life Trading members, which we would love to have you with Real Life Trading as well. Just go to reallifetrading.com. We have all access pass. And after we uh, shut down on YouTube, we are going all day. We also have classes we do throughout the day as well. We have different topics. We talk crypto. We talk stocks. We talk futures. We talk real estate. We we talk investing. We talk enriching lives. And that could all be found in the all access pass on reallifetrading.com. So just because uh, in about three minutes when we disconnect, it doesn't mean it's the end forever. You can join us for free any single time. Also, by the way, we have full uh, free classes on the website as well. Beginner, intermediate, and advanced classes, plus lots of other content. If you have not clicked the thumbs up, make sure you do so. If you have not subscribed, well, how else do you think you're going to get the newest content and the latest videos that we put out every single day uh, for the most part? So make sure you guys go ahead and do that in YouTube land. Looking at Google, we have, a again, a decent little gap up. I'm just worried about the 111.17 zone. So 111.17. That would be a, a little struggle, but otherwise decent looking gap. So again, we have a little bit of hope in some of these things. We got some hopium floating around. <laughs> All right, we got AMD. We got 86.10 on AMD. Uh, this one's not in a safety zone at all, to be honest. So this was actually gapping down slightly at or under that VPOC from yesterday. Next target, if we break down, uh, this is going to be a one, just flip a coin and see if we you want to go bullish or, or bearish. But uh, 8501 could be in the cards if we open slightly a little bit lower. Otherwise, to a bullish side, we also got some room to the bullish side. So if we end up holding this VPOC, which right this second we do, we are. $88 would be to the, to the high side. 10 EMA strategy, we're not able to really take advantage out of the gate just because it's inside day. What do we got left? Oh, no, a minute. Spent way too much time on Bed Bath Beyond. Way too much time. But uh, NVIDIA, again, kind of looking a little bit. We are still inside, so out of the gate. Not going to have to worry about the 10 EMA strategy uh, yet. But it's not looking as strong as some of those potential other gap ups. We could watch that closely. Targets on NVIDIA. Let's see if we're going to get some room. We did see on AMD we did. Uh, we're, we're into a little bit of a cluster on uh on the video. So again, we might come into a little support or at least worst case chop um, to the bullish side would be a little bit cleaner. I just don't have that feeling that we're going to get any type of strength. And looking at Apple inside day. So we're going to have some time to analyze that one when the market opens Delta uh, and we got Delta probably also inside day. So for 10 EMA strategy, we're going to have to sit on our hands for a few minutes. All my people out in YouTube land, thank you for joining us each and every morning. Make sure you guys also catch the Pivot Podcast. That one's free too. I almost forgot. But make sure you guys check that. That comes out every single Friday anywhere where uh, people do podcasting, where that thing happens. Otherwise, unfortunately, I got to let you guys go on YouTube. Make sure, again, if you did not hit the like and subscribe, make sure you guys do so. And we will catch you tomorrow. Enjoy the last day of the month. Be easy out there in the market. Stretch, breathe a little bit. We got an entire month to go. Next month starts it all over again, and we just run that up one more time. So be easy out there in YouTube, Lynn, and I'll catch all of you.